Hello, Engagement Excellence Summit. Last session of the day, Margaret Heffernan, so closing keynote speech. Now, uh, as you expect from any kind of, you know, uh, closing session, you expect big things, you know, people can do fantastic uh, work in these. And yeah, Margaret's was good. I really enjoyed it. And it's, it's one of those lovely ones where, um, you know, she pops up, she's got no slides. Uh, she's there. It's sort of like, you know, you just sort of feel like, oh, this is a, you know, this could be a fireside chat. So it's kind of like quite a warm, quite an engaging style. And um, almost this situation where she's talking uh, gently and you're kind of like lulled in and drawn into this. And what are you weaving? Where are we going with this? And I'll be honest, not immediately apparent to me. Um, she was sort of giving this example of places she worked and sort of, you know, like being very honest about, you know, look, we're looking for people that love the challenge, that will wake up in the middle of the night thinking about stuff and, you know, wanting to get onto it. And and at that point, I'll be honest, I was a little, a little, where's this going? You know, this, this seems toxic. You know, it's just like, oh, I, I want people that are thinking about work all hours or, or what is this? And, um, you know, no. That's not where she's going at all. Um, actually, it was sort of, yeah, really about sort of the people that they that you have, that you work with. I mean, that piece was really about sort of trying to get um, people that enjoy the thrill of the challenge uh, in that specific example. So just, you know, creating a culture where you've got these challenge seekers that more than anything love an insurmountable problem. And that's was tying into the concept um you know so we're, we're back to respect relationship and purpose and people need to have purpose in their work and purpose is where you have real value and intrinsic meaning in your role and so for these people the intrinsic meaning was challenge and she gave other examples so the british national health service so you know that's a tough working environment um, you know, it's a, a political football. It gets not from, you know, one team to the other every few years. There always seems to be restructures. There always seems to be a funding crisis. And yet you have people that know that they are changing lives. They are ending suffering. Um, inherently, they have true value and purpose. You have CERN. So the scientists working there with the Large Hadron Collider, they are looking for things that don't exist yet but they might never exist. It might be wrong, but they don't know and they have to put huge time and effort and resource into trying to answer a question that may never be answered. Yet you have people who are building things that they might never actually get to use themselves in their lifetime, but they still want to because it is part of this wider mission, wider vision. Arab architects, they want to build the buildings that no one else can build. They want those challenges. What you want to do, that's insane. No one's ever done that. We don't know how, but that's what we thrive on because that's what gives us value and meaning. So purpose. And in there, what sort of, how can you deliver on people and help them deliver on that purpose? And in some of kind of like the relationship and the respect piece, again, we tie back into this idea that Experiments have shown that sort of the more focused you are on money, that the less focused you are on others. So actually, if your rewards and your motivation are dangling financial carrots and trying to get people to, to do more for cash, actually you are focusing people towards individual options and individual approaches rather than team approaches, rather than group approaches. And why does that matter? Well, um, where you set up individual success, um, whether that's through forced ranking or putting people into competition with each other, I've talked about Bruce Daly's session where actually working as a team, you get the same results and higher endorphin levels. Um, but you are discouraging cooperation. That actually, if you're trying to position people above each other, the incentive you're creating is not to help each other. 
actually, how can I maintain my position? How can I get above each other? I've got information. If I give this to other people, I might be threatening my position. I might be threatening my financial reward. So I should keep this to myself. Is that what we want? Not really. We want people working together. We want people sharing information. And there was a, an absolutely beautiful example she gave. It's a study of uh, looking for correlations between IQ and problem solving. So correlation is not causation. It doesn't necessarily mean that one thing is the other, but is there some kind of connection in terms of results? And straight off the bat, yes, there seems to be a, a general correlation between an individual's IQ and an individual's problem solving ability. So the higher your IQ, fine, the more likely you are to be able to individually solve a problem. So far, so unexceptional. But now let's put people into groups. And how good is a group at problem solving? Well, they did not find a correlation between the group's collective IQ and their ability to problem solve. So if you put all of the highest IQ people into a single group, they are not inherently more uh, able to solve problems than if you had put all the lowest IQ people into a group. Uh, equally, if you had a few high IQ leaders and then followers, you know, lower IQ followers to be in there, no, that there's no correlation share. Correlation there. So suddenly IQ is not the factor. How smart you are as individuals in a group does not make you the most productive, does not make you the most efficient. So what did? Where was the correlation? Well, there were three correlations. Firstly, uh, in your empathy. As measured in the, uh, see if I can get this right, the mind in the eyes test. So a way of, uh, yes, measuring people's empathy, how well they were able to read and understand others. So the groups that had a higher collective score in this test had better problem solving skills. Secondly, where everyone in the group had made an equal contribution. So not obviously, you know, exactly the same or all doing exactly the same things, but everybody in the group had participated in that uh, solution. So no one was sort of sidelined or left it. Again, coming back to the different themes I've talked about, that no one is inhibited, no one's deferring. Everyone is bringing their true selves to solving this issue. And thirdly, and absolutely best of all, the groups had a higher proportion of women that were better at solving group problems which is a brilliant one. Um, correlation is not causation. Maybe it is that women are have a bit of an advantage in the workplace in terms of empathy in the eyes and mind in reading it, in terms of allowing, allowing even contribution. Certainly, we've all heard about mansplaining and talking over women. Uh, the worst time I ever did that, I was so mortified and horrified, but I have absolutely uh, repeated something a woman has said like 30 seconds after they said it without realizing. And I consider myself, you know, a pretty woke guy. Jesus Christ, if I'm doing that. Yeah, okay. So I have my piece to part in this, but there we go. Relationship respect. That actually the groups that are best at solving these issues are the groups that are best at reading each other and making an equal contribution, allowing everyone to participate. And this should not be a surprise. Think about diversity and inclusion. A large part of the business case for encouraging diversity and inclusion is because it is business sense, that organizations with higher diversity have better performance. And when you look at that, a large part of it is that a wider variety of people is a wider variety of views, that you are more likely to challenge ideas robustly and make them stronger than kind of settling into groupthink and just okaying the suggestion because you all think the same way or because you're deferring to an individual. And indeed, I wasn't aware of this at the time, but the delightful Angelica Galli commented on something and brought to my uh, attention another one of Margaret's uh, sessions, which is about super chickens. Fantastic, super chickens. Um, and it's referring back to an experiment about productivity. Could you make a super flock of super chickens if you take the most productive egg layers 
out of a flock and group them all together in a single flock. And so essentially that's what they did. They took these different flocks, they took the chickens out that were laying the most eggs and they put them together in a single group. And what they found was pretty horrific. So the regular flocks continued normally, they continued healthily, they were producing, whereas the super chickens were pretty much pecking each other to death. So the ones that were most productive appeared to be the most productive at the expense of each other. So, again, back to, are we focusing on high IQ individuals, high individual achievers and their successes when we should be thinking about the successes and the health of the overall group? So, are we harming the health of the overall group from having sort of superstar individuals that are sort of feeding themselves at the expense of others and harming that equal contribution, lacking that empathy that shows it correlates with the top problem solving of groups. So the takeaway here is that it's just, it's not the individual bricks that make us strong, but it is the mortar that leads to it. How are our people interacting and relating to each other? So, yeah, and that was sort of the call to arms. I mean, the other fascinating examples about just how ways we can encourage helpfulness, social interaction, bringing people together. But yeah, that core concept, we are stronger together as a team. That we need that purpose to work towards as our individual motivation. But then to recognize the meaning and the value to work together effectively we need the respect and we need the strong relationships so the interaction with each other as individual human beings and really what a great summary of the entire engagement excellence summit <laughs>